In one of the great documents of the Second Vatican Council called Sacrosanctum Concilium, it reveals, friends, the deep spiritual truth about the place of worship in Christian living, namely that adoring and glorifying God comes before all else. You know, everybody, as the synod on synodality opens up in Rome at this time, it is an ideal time in many respects to begin looking at how we operate as a church, how we spread the Christian faith in modern Ireland. And in that, how do our own actions spread the faith? How do our reverence for all things God, and especially how do we as individuals, but also as a collective Christian community, treat the Eucharistic presence of Jesus? You know, and as the, the current Synod of Bishops convenes in Rome to discuss so many uh, contemporary topics of importance, yet, you know, one of the most visible topics in parishes, you know, on the ground, right across the world, that floods the surface again and again and again, is the issue of how we approach Jesus in the Eucharist. It's not just about how we act and behave in the physical presence of the church, but also how do we receive him? On the tongue, kneeling on the tongue, or on the hand only, or vice versa. Um, because, you know, it's interesting to note, everybody, that anecdotally, most of our young adults in the country at the moment who are diving deeper and deeper into their Christian uh, tradition and faith and their love for Christ and of the church's teachings, they seem to be opting for a more traditional approach to the liturgy, to what, you know, what goes on in the sanctuary, than what many of us might be used to. Um, and because I think they can see what we have done in reducing the sacred liturgy, you know, God's action, you know, the Mass, to a merely social gathering of like-minded religious individuals. Because such an approach only seems to reduce the boundaries between the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the world. It has not produced the evangelical fruit for Christ, which we might have taught originally. And this is something I've noticed that Archbishop of Armagh recently spoke about on an interview. And you know what, everybody? The, the, the voice of our young adults in our church today, it's a voice worth listening to for so many reasons. Like I said, many of our young adults, they have jumped into learning more about the Catholic faith and they've deepened their love for Christ. And they often come forward to receive Jesus in the Eucharist in a very reverential manner. Sometimes it's on a tongue, sometimes it's kneeling, sometimes it's being you know, on the hand, but doing it slowly with love and reverence. Um, and you know what, sadly, this issue of either receiving Jesus on the tongue, kneeling or on the hand, has become such a divisive issue in the church, amongst faithful, amongst many of my own brother priests, I've noticed. Why? I don't know. I just don't get why it's become such a divisive issue. The physical presence of Christ in the Eucharistic bread, folks, it's the heart of the Christian community, or as the church, again, beautifully teaches in one of the most powerful documents the church ever produced, Lumen Gentium, from the Second Vatican Council, simply puts that the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the Christian faith. The Eucharist is the medium by which Jesus primarily transforms you and me into himself. It's not about us transforming Jesus into us, it's the other way around. The central importance of the Eucharist, friends, it can never be overstated. The Eucharist is the sacrament by which Jesus himself gives us himself to consume, to eat. Why? So that through love, we may enter into full communion with God. Full communion with God. That's the goal of the liturgy. Not to make us good people. We don't have to believe in God to be a good person. But the liturgy is here to make us, to bridge the gap between ourselves and God into full communion. The Mass, everybody, the Mass, it is not a ritual we have invented. It's a divine gift of God, of himself to us. That's why, you know, St. John Vianney once said, and I think it's a beautiful statement that should give us pause for thought. He said, God would have given us something greater if he had something greater than himself to give. Powerful statement. Food for thought. Food for thought. I mean, 
to say that this is a matter of crucial importance, it is an understatement. And I think, you know, once we renew our hearts, our minds, of who and what the Eucharist is, our actions and behavior generally fall, fall, follow afterwards. Because look, without a shadow of a doubt, there is a tremendous need for us to understand and to contemplate the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. It's the church's responsibility to make us, that the fa make sure that the faithful, you and me, receive Holy Communion having the right interior dispositions. In other words, to approach receiving the Eucharist, to adore or to receive, understanding who and what it is we are receiving, who and what it is we are adoring. Because friends, we all know, every one of us, what is often most familiar to us, we take for granted. We really take things for granted. Those things are most familiar to us. And how we, as believers, you and I, how us as believers treat, approach, and behave around the Eucharist, it is vital for our future and current uh, evangelization efforts in this country. I mean, the witness we give in how we receive and revere the Eucharist has major impact on our families, our friends, our neighbors, our communities, and indeed the nation, I would say, and indeed even inside the church. And we can see today, everybody, the results of having taken the presence of Jesus for granted. I mean, and this is the same argument that comes up every single year, particularly around May, in Ireland anyway, when we have First Holy Communions. How many times at the First Holy Communions do I find Eucharistic breads scattered along the floor? I mean, I, the other day I found Eucharistic breads on the floor again. You know, it, it is a constant issue we're facing. That's Jesus' holy body discarded on the floor. It's serious. Um, and how many times as well, either through First Communions, funerals or weddings, have many of you folks, the faithful in our parishes, come to me afterwards because you were somewhat traumatized by seeing somebody going up to receive the Eucharist, did not consume it, put it in their bag or their pocket. And they didn't do that out of malicious intent. Absolutely not. Well, I would hope not anyway. They did it because of social pressure. It's the thing to do. I don't want to be left out. Well, oh God, everybody else is going up to receive. I better not be um, the odd one out. You know, taking Jesus for granted. I mean, how many tiny particles of Jesus fall on that carpet after every Mass? And it's just hoovered up. You know? You know, by people, because of people grabbing the Eucharist really quickly, or us as priests, or as, and as Eucharistic, extraordinary Eucharistic, Eucharistic ministers, being rough with Jesus, distributing the body of our Lord with great speed. Why? To get the Mass over and done with as possible. Um, I mean, as regular Mass goers, all of us, we are, we're the primary witnesses, everybody, for the source and the summit of our faith. We need to begin to act and behave again around the Eucharist as if it is central to our faith, as if it is, he is central to our lives. And our children, everybody, they only do what they see us doing. Simple as that. If we don't revere, if we don't show dignity, our children, our young people, they will do the same. Just as they will revere, they will adore, they respect the Eucharist if they see us do the same. This is not rocket science. It really isn't. And it should not be a divisive issue in any shape or form. I mean, friends, look, at the Church's official teaching on this issue, whether we receive the Eucharist in the hand or on the tongue, kneeling down, it's not complicated again. It's quite simple. And it simply is this, and I quote, the new manner, the new manner of giving communion on the hand must not be imposed in a way that would exclude traditional practice on the tongue, even down, for example. And friends, this is the position of Pope Francis. This is the position of the Archbishop of Dublin, who very recently spoke to many of our priests, and he made it very clear to us that anyone who wishes to receive the Blessed Sacrament on the tongue should not be stopped from doing so. No priest has the authority to deny anybody giving witness to the Lord in how they approached him to receive, either on the tongue, kneeling down, or on the hand, slowly and reverentially. And it's important, everybody, to make the point here as well. This is not a competition. Just because somebody receives on the tongue, kneeling down, does not make them holier than those who receive him on their hands with love. 
or the other way around. Because that's where divisive starts to place, come in. That's where the enemy starts to come in. Oh, he or she is holier than you. How dare she pretend she's more holier than you? That's not of God. How we approach Christ in the Eucharist makes all the difference. Whether on the hand, slowly, and we consume him there and then before we go back to our seats, or we approach, we kneel down in adoration of Christ and receive him on the tongue. Beautiful. Either way, beautiful. Let's take our time. You know, and, and as parish priest here, everybody, as moderator of three parishes and four churches, it, this is something I hope to bring to our awareness a little bit better and more in the coming months. And I'm hoping to speak with my own brother priests and their own Eucharistic ministers about allowing people to receive on the tongue or on the hand carefully, if they should choose so. Because, friends, we have to slow down. We have to, if we want to, genuflect, bow, be reverential, kneel down. And if you feel, if it's if you feel to do so. And take great care in how we treat, distribute, and consume the body of our Lord. I mean, what we do when we step forward to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, it should always be, as, as canon law says, and I quote, it should always indicate and promote adoration, the adoration necessary before receiving Eucharistic Christ. Beautiful line. So friends, look at, at each first Saturday of the month, starting from today, for those who wish to receive the Blessed Sacrament on the tongue or kneeling down, please feel free to do so. And you can use the kneelers we have here in front, if you wish. Um, and yes, I know some of you are saying, but Father Bill, I thought the first Saturday of the month of the Mass is about Our Lady. Of course it is. We're giving honor to Our Lady. The prayers of the Eucharist will have reverence and love for Our Lady as we go along. Of course the first Saturday month is in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mother. But anybody who knows Our Lady, who takes her seriously and, and, and is guided by her, will always find their hearts, their minds and their actions gently guided by her to not only love Jesus deeper and deeper and love each other, but show more awe, reverence and respect for the Eucharistic presence of Jesus Christ. So, in the renewal of the faith in Ireland and in the church, let's start everybody at the source, at the source and summit of our faith, of the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And I think in doing this, it's worth keeping in mind what Saint Pope Paul VI said in 1975, where he said, modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. If he does listen to teachers, it's because they're witnesses. Our Lady of Ireland, pray for us.